to the Dogish Podcast. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's your girl, <laughs> Sylvia West, <laughs> pet expert and dog trainer at Dog Up in This Bitch. And I am here with my fabulous co host, as always, Jason Arias, What's up? the co founder of Forever USA. What's up, Jason? Cutting me off. My God. I'm trying to get more involved. Chomping at the yeah, bit. Upgrading the conversation, like like making this more back and forth and, and all that kind of stuff. You yeah. Know what, you know what I'm talking about? We had too much fun today. Um, precursor, there are many F-bombs in this episode, but listen, it I was mean, just not, that kind of morning. Not, not Sam Jackson-ish. <laughs> but I'm saying if you have I mean, young children and you're yeah, listening, you may yeah, just yeah. want to be aware that this is you know, with that we, with that said they were happy f bombs it's not like we were, they like, were me. like no like no, no. All. no 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 they were but we had way too much fun with our upcoming guest megan who is the founder one of the co-founders of gal's best friend blog she is nyc dog mom she is one of the founders of the pet summit i mean she's An author of a new book, book coming out about coming out about oh, her the, rescue dog yeah, Rumba. Yeah, yeah. dude she's from the dominican incredible. we had such a blast talking to her. We learned so much as per was, usual. I I actually almost froze up a couple times because like there was just a a, a plethora of things to talk about and I didn't know which direction to go. You like More that? on plethora in a second. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into it. Let's just get right into All right, it. Let's go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I never know to whether to say good morning or hello or welcome and just like leave it ambiguous because the show airs at like one o'clock. <laughs> and also we talk to people on the other side of the world. Right, right, so right. like sometimes they're like, it's 6 p.m. We're like, JK. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> uh <laughs> well welcome. I'm I'm excited to have the, the group together. And Megan, I'm super excited to meet you and you too. Um, and learn a little bit more about who you are and what you do. It just seemed like uh, one of my fit we were talking about favorite words just slightly before the show uh and one of my favorite words is plethora mm. Mm. it's a good one yeah that's yeah, yeah, much yeah. better and than not as good as fuck but yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> ever ever since the days of the uh the three amigos which they, they use the word plethora in there it's mm. it's always and you you are like a a plethora of things dog related from from what we're picking up and i'm excited to learn all about them awesome then, yeah yeah i think megan truly embodies what we're trying to talk about in this show which mm -hmm. you know, the whole podcast is dedicated to pet parents who really are like radical raving raging pet parents and this is their platform to just be unapologetically a dog mom a dog dad and absolutely nothing else uh so megan talk to us about <laughs> yeah introduce You're, us in, in, like tell, how did you, you, you become this crazy i mean you are literally nyc dog mom like that is your brand so, <laughs> so how did yeah. that how did that come about so growing up my mom trained dogs so she trained rottweilers so we had i mean no joke like five to six dogs from the time i was a baby until i left for new york um so that being where, said where did you grow up dallas okay yeah so and my parents still have six dogs um and not like i'm not talking like chihuahua type dogs like we have like a pit bull a bloodhound a belgium alma a border collie a blue healer a, you know i mean it's well, like a lots situation. of working dogs yeah. it's a situation going on over there um <laughs> so um when i got to new york i quickly realized that something was missing um and it was a dog um so then then came pharrell um, who is my first New York dog, um, Border Collie. And um, quickly, I mean, exactly, actually, a year after Pharrell um, came Rosie, um, another Border Collie that we rescued from upstate New York. And then I decided I was in the fashion industry. I worked at Macy's on the buying team. And then after that, I, um, oh my gosh, something, something just popped up on my screen. Sorry, force quit. We will not be force quitting this. Sorry, Stay guys. with us. Don't leave yet. It was just getting good. <laughs> Wait, what's happening? Uh, so Pharrell, um, Fashion Macy's, and then I we started this um, website called Gal's Best Friend. Yep, which is an online dog mom plethora of things. Nice. Um, Jason, <laughs> look at that. So, throwing it in there for you. 
Um, and that took off and it was really fun. And the dog's Instagram took off. And then um, I was like, why am I working in fashion? This is so dumb. This is not what I want to do anymore. Um, there's one, no money to like, it's just stressful at all times and no, nothing fun about it. I can't it even imagine. Yeah. I always like, think of uh, devil wears Prada whenever I think of fashion in like a big city like that. It's kind of like that, but not as glamorous. <laughs> like the attitude so it's is there. worse. Yeah. Like so the worse. attitude and the situations are there, but there's no fashion closet where you can go change outfits in. Um, that does not that, exist. That sounds horrific. <laughs> yeah. Especially at Macy's. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so then I just quit. Like no job, just quit. Um, and then I started working for Dog Parker, now called Dog Spot. Okay. Which I don't know if you know what that is. It's um, they're these house, like these houses, like these outdoor dog houses that go outside of like um, grocery stores, bodegas, coffee shops. Oh, things that you those, can't bring your yeah, dog yeah, 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 yeah. You, I've yeah. seen them, and they're like temperature controlled. Yep. Like so they're temperature controlled. They like auto sanitize. There's a camera in there, so you can watch your dog on a camera while you're. And it's only meant for like people that tie their dogs up. The whole premise behind it was like stop tying your fucking dog up. Right. It's dangerous. It's dumb. Um, people will in, steal your dog. People will steal your dog. Um, or worse, like your dog will get hurt. Um, mm. so it's basically put your dog in this house for 10 minutes while you run into the store real fast, um, and get it out. So I worked for them. I was a community manager and then I went to rebel dog, which does those fun tags and accessories. And now I'm at Fi, which, um, is the GPS dog collar. I run all their social and yeah, influencer yeah, yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then, um, oh, and in between all that, we got rumba which we went on a vacation to the Dominican Republic. We found this dog on the beach. Long story short, we fell in love. Vacation turned rescue. Um, and we brought it, found a way to bring her back. Um, so now we have three dogs in New York City. Um, and We've got Pharrell, Rosie, and Rumba. And Rumba. Mm-hmm. Okay. so good with names, Sylvia. Yes. <laughs> two, two border collies and a pot cake. <laughs> and a pot cake. Okay. Yep. I think that's an excellent place to take a break. Um, we'll be right back to talk more about this pot cake. I want to just like time out. <laughs> so we went- so a lot going on there. <laughs> like, right. Well, Pump we made it up breaks. to pot cake. We, we yeah. started from, from Hold New on, York though. fashion. Well, we started from Dallas. On. Yes. Then, I, I then need to New recap York. this. Right. And then like, we're, my, now my we're break. pot cake. Okay. So, so basically what you're saying is you've always been a crazy dog lady. It's, mm-hmm. it's genetics. Before it's you knew genetic it. for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I Born can relate. It. It's, it's genetic for me too. My mom is a crazy animal lady. We had like... Mm-hmm. Her favorite animal is a goat. So I had like four gro- goats growing up Love and goats. dogs. And, yeah. Pygmy um, goats. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. And a full size one was mm. my mom's like my mom's girl. Mm. Um, anyways. So always crazy dog lady turned into fashion lady turned into why am I doing this lady into full on dog mom, dog blog for dog moms, dog Instagram influencer full on your life is dogs. Like you have some dogs up in this bitch. I do. I can relate. Okay. So we get this pot cake, but I want to just, you like kind of just threw the story out there real quick. Yeah, I forgot oh, We went it. to the Dominican Republic <laughs> and like adopted a dog. So, cause I went to the Dominican Republic and I did not come back with a dog. So if you could just, <laughs> what? Huh? I'm so my brain. how that happened was, uh, so we went Uh to just you know get away we went in like march because it was cold as fuck here so we went to get warm and then the first day we were there um we were walking on the beach and there was this dog laying in the sand like off in the distance and we were like wait is that a dog um (laughs) and we came here for a purpose yeah i'm not joking this was like 20 minutes in and <laughs> we just it, got on the beach. We, like, I don't even, like, we didn't change. Like, I think we went to the hotel, like went to the room, changed clothes out of our airplane clothes and walked on the beach and then found Rumba. Um, so then it just turned into, oh my God, this dog is perfect. Like within five seconds, she was like looking in our face and like hugging on us. And I was crying. It was like, a, there were, 
like pictures were being taken and vacation was turned upside down love um, at so first sight does exist love at first i mean it was legit love at first sight so first mm -hmm. the pun definitely oh for, yeah there we go <laughs> so we went and you know we got got our water got our food just to make sure she was okay and then after that we literally called every single vet rescue um anything that we could find in the area and nobody nobody would help us nobody cared to help us like i don't know if y'all know but in the dominican dogs are kind of like the new york city rat they're everywhere people don't care about them um rumba we had found out from the i don't know if you know in the, on the beach how there's the guys that sell like bracelets and mama wana mm -hmm. and all that stuff um they told her that they call they told us that they call her rumba so they named her rumba and then they also told us that the hotels have tried to kill her a few times that she'd been poisoned a few weeks before um oh wow that like the hotels they just don't want beach dogs like they think they bother the guest they're a nuisance all these things so Meanwhile, nope. all of our listeners are like, we are going to the Dominican. Yeah. So <laughs> people were just like, nobody cared to help us. They were like, mm, sorry, another day, another dog. We don't really care. Um, mm. So then finally, we found a Yelp review from like 20, like five years before. And um, it was a rescue called Red Collars in the area. So we messaged, I like messaged her on on Yelp, I think, or Facebook. I think I found her Facebook link. And I was like, hey, found this dog. Here's a picture. Oh, and in the meantime, we found another dog um, that she was friends with. Named Pop we named him Poppy. We took food out there one night and there was another little puppy that must have been like four months old. And we were like, oh shit, now we have two dogs. Like, I love how um, you just immediately had ownership. Yeah, right. we're like, now we have Wait, two. Now we have two more dogs. Yep, here we go. So we, I think we have a four dog family. Oh, totally. Well, at that point, I was thinking five. <laughs> um, so then we called, um, I messaged this woman. And I was like, hey, found these two dogs. Here's a photo. Like, is there any way you could help? We leave for New York City in two days. Um, so we need to, like, can you take her? Do you know somebody that would be willing to take her? Can you help me get her back? Um, and she wrote back the next morning. was like, hey, I found these. I, I spayed that dog. So she spayed Rumba a year before. Cause she does spay and neuter click clinics for strays oh, in the area. Wow. She was like, I know that dog. Um, I'll meet you on the beach in the morning. I was like, Oh my God. So this was like the day we were leaving at this point. Um, so she meets us on the beach. We had to finagle with um, the then guys that said, Oh no, this is our dog. You can't have her on the beach um, and change mm -hmm. their story tune real fast because they wanted money. Um, so we ended up paying off these people. Um, got the two dogs. We get in the car with this woman that we just met like five minutes before. We like drive 30 minutes into the island to go to some vet. Like who knows, like we could have been getting into a bad situation, but we're like, yeah. Um, There's a dog involved. It's usually it's fine. Right. It's fine, right? So we go to the vet, they get all checked out and then we take them to her shelter, um, which is amazing. This woman, her name is Janella and she takes dogs off the street that are and like, there was a dog that had been dipped in acid there. Oh. Um, a dog who someone cut its nose off. Um, oh, wow. Like dog, people just abuse these dogs there and they don't care. They just want to get rid of them. Um, so she is like the angel of the Dominican Republic. And she does these spay and neuter clinics to spay the strays and all this stuff. So we go to her shelter um, and she decided, she agreed to hold them for us for two weeks while we got all the paperwork um done she had, the dogs had to be quarantined um and then two weeks later she shipped us poppy and rumba and then also um i work with this rescue um called global strays um so we took five other or four other dogs um from the shelter um so wow. we went to the airport and picked up what six dogs um and kept rumba shipped out the others and here we are today Jason, I know you're exploding over there. I can see it on your face. No, I'm just, it's, um, it, no matter how many times I hear like the, the negative stories from other places, mm -hmm. not in our circle, it always still catches me off guard. I don't, and yeah. it's just, it's, it's horrible. And like with Global Strays, we work with rescues in Nicaragua and Colombia and um, Dominica and Puerto Rico, like all these, like 
our main focus is South America um, and like developing country areas. And like a few weeks ago, there was this dog that like somebody broke its back. Um, so it like walks on its front legs. They ended up having to put it down because it was just so bad. It's just like so crazy. So our main thing at Global Strays is we do spay and neuter clinics, but then we also do community education. Um, so we have people go into the communities and like do these classes with kids and mm. you know, their parents, like, this is how you treat a dog. This is how you treat your dog. This is how you yeah. treat dogs that are not your dogs. These are how you treat cows. This is how you treat horses. This is how you treat cats. Um, so it's just like a, like a education thing over there. I think that's so important though, because it's one thing to go in and pull the dogs out of these areas, Yeah, which is like, that's like small impact. Like that, you know, what, what Global Strays is doing is like literally teaching the man how to fish instead of just Mm -hmm. taking the fish out of the sea. Yeah. Um, Which I think is so valuable for overall and long-term well-being, you know, Mm -hmm. of, of the animal community. So I, that's, that's amazing. So do you know what happened to, to Poppy and the other? So Poppy is with one of my friends. Um, So we, when we got the dogs back, um, the, the four, not the other dogs, the four dogs that weren't Poppy and Rumba, they went straight to Global Strays um, okay. and they were fostered out. Poppy and Rumba came back to my apartment. Pharrell was very pissed. Um, <laughs> I have like, we were looking at these photos the other day. I have this photo of Pharrell on the couch and he's like giving me the side eye. <laughs> Just like in the corner, like what the fuck lady? Like first she brought <laughs> Rosie, mad. like so pissed. Um, I mean, he didn't interact with Rumba for like two months. Refused. <laughs> oh. Refused to go near her. He was like, now they're best friends, but it took a while. Um, but we had, and like the, the goal or the goal was to get um, Rumba adopted. Wink, wink. And um, <laughs> so, I, like, okay. So is that wink, wink, like at, that's what I told my partner, but JK, uh-huh, I knew yeah. all along. I was 100, keeping- 100%. Okay. Um, I made this like six page application that would be like, I was like, if off the record. Interested- yeah. Off the record. You totally I, wanted her to be adopted. I totally was looking for the perfect home. Yep. And everyone that filled out this application, I got like so many people like, oh, we'll take her. We'll take her. I found like the dumbest things wrong with them. I'm like, <laughs> okay, give me one. Give me one of those examples. I need but, to know. I didn't like a girl's style. <laughs> yeah, wrong name. I don't like this. Name. Like, I, like I didn't like the way she dressed. I was like, mm, <laughs> fashion police on dog right. mom. Yeah. Like, I was like, this isn't going to happen. Um, she wears too many tank tops. Too many. Like it's not. <laughs> Rumba cannot be photographed with that. Um, so that happened. And then there was um, somebody else that was I think they lived in like Jersey or something and I was like mm, too far Jersey <laughs> <laughs> I was like that's too far that's not gonna work um I mean I was finding like the dumbest things and then finally I I went to Italy with my with um some girlfriends and on, I remember vividly we were in the airport in Rome about to get on the plane back to New York City and I was sitting there with my friend Melissa and I just started like uncontrollably crying and she was like, and like these, like all these Italian people were looking at me like I was crazy. And I like, they were like, somebody was like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I was like sobbing. And um, my friend Melissa was like, you got to stop. You got to stop crying. Like what's wrong? And I was like, I can't get rid of Rumba. Like I can't get rid of her. Like I just, there's Aww. like, I just cannot get rid of this dog. Um, so then I got home and walked into my apartment bawling and my boyfriend was like, what happened? I thought you were in Italy. Like what's wrong? <laughs> and I'm like, just on vacation? I'm like, listen, here's the deal it's rumba are you like like rub the stay if you can get on the train or we're leaving um and he was like of course we're gonna keep rumba so um good answer yeah good answer all right we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna come right back to it all right we're back okay so like we've learned like all of this stuff on on rumba and i'm I have uh, a gut feeling that you could probably sit and gush on Rumba for, for like the course. for the rest, um, mm-hmm. but a little bit deeper. Like, what kind of impacts has Rumba had on you? Like, uh, I think you're writing a book now, right? We are. Um, so my mom has been pushing me since day one, since getting your Rumba to do a kids book, and I'm like, Mom, I don't my children to Arthur. Like, I don't have kids. I I don't know. 
Um, and she kept pushing, kept pushing. And then I started getting like DMs on Instagram asking about it. Like you should do a kid's book about Rumble. You should do a kid's book. Um, so then um, a publisher reached out and it was just like all these like weird things that happened. Um, and they suggested doing a series. Um, so that's what we're doing. And so the first one is like Rumba's story. Um, I It's kind of changed because I wrote it as, the real story and the publisher was like okay you're writing for kids um <laughs> we can't talk about dogs dipped in acid <laughs> right. like you're gonna have to relax um so i had to change like they're like kids don't understand like me and my boyfriend went on a vacation they don't get mm. that um so i had to so now tom is my dad um i'm a little girl um so i gave tom had two options i'm like you can be my dad or my brother take your pick um he was like, I'll go with daddy. Um, so <laughs> Tom's such a good sport. <laughs> yeah, a good sport. Saving so, pancakes and everything. And everything. So we, um, yeah, so it's a story about a little girl who goes on vacation with her dad and um, finds a dog named Rumba. And it's like a story about like compassion and how to treat dogs and people even that like are less fortunate than you that you don't know, like I'm um, showing love and compassion. Um, towards animals mainly and then a portion we worked out this deal with the publisher that a portion of all cells are going to global strays amazing yeah Yeah. I was just going to bring them up it feels kind of really aligned with the messaging from global strays about Mm -hmm. early childhood education on like just helping kids learn and I think for me is one of the biggest when I as a dog trainer like I love working with my families that have kids because that's an opportunity to get to like go into the home and help. I call them my junior trainers, Mm -hmm. but to help my junior trainers learn how to be a part of the conversation and the relationship building with their dogs, because it's so important. I don't think I would be the human I am today if I didn't grow up with animals. Oh, totally. My mom is like, this book is dedicated to me, right? Like, she's like, you know, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. You know, you wouldn't love dogs if it wasn't for me. Like, I mean, it's like an everyday thing. We may um, need to get Mama Rose on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, she would love, she does search and rescue. She's like, she's very into the dog world. Um, but yeah, very cool. We're doing, we're also doing a bilingual version of the book. I was so. just going to ask that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amazing. So, so people in the Dominican and Nicaragua and all these um, places can also read it and learn from it. And is that out or when does it come out? Fall 2021. So this fall. Oh, cool. Whoa, we're I know. zooming in on it. I know. Super well, it's a good exciting. thing you had that like year off at home to just become an author all of a sudden. Yeah, it was, it was, it, it was crazy because it, it, you don't realize how much goes into making a book. And I don't know mm. if y'all know Noble Friend Shop. She is a, um, she is a, has an online store where she makes like custom portraits of your pets and then she puts them on like I have sweatpants I have backpacks I have like everything um so she's a really fun graphic designer so she's doing all the illustrations for the book um so it's just crazy to see how much work actually goes into it and then like it take like everything is done it's been done for a while but then it has to go to the publisher and there's all this editing and like layouts and so it's a lot yeah super excited for it though I'm now, excited too. I can't wait to read it. The other thing that I'm excited to talk about is the the pet summit, because this yes. is this is something that's completely separate from from our trips to Dominican and pancakes mm-hmm. and, and other fun stories. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for those who weren't with us on the break, right. Megan left her amazing pancake and bacon breakfast right. to be with us this morning. So that's why we keep bringing a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had an oops moment this morning. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I have a podcast. We all have those many times every day. I did that this morning too. Uh, See? And it's my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) So so tell us a little bit about the Pet Summit. Yeah. So the Pet Summit was this weird idea that I had like two years ago. Um, I don't know if either of you know or anyone listening knows about Blog Paws. Um, It is this or it was this conference that was held for like 10 years straight and they had them in different locations and it was um, for pet bloggers. And as Gal's best friend, we went like three different times. And I mean, it was great for what it was. Um, they start, they don't do it anymore, but it was very focused around blogging and like SEO and, you know, like those kind of things. And then it was also targeted towards 
not the like millennial dog mom, I guess I would say. Um, and so, I mean, it, we learned a lot. It was great. Very like loved going to it and all of these things, but we were like, there should be something similar, but also like working with influencers and like teaching influencers, all these things that they need to know and teaching, um, rescues, like how to use social media and how to like do fundraisers and all this and small businesses, how they can grow using online tools and all this stuff. So we, um, we were like, let's just do it. So me and, um, I don't know if y'all know a puppy named Charlie, um, the two fluffy doodles, um, their mom and Maggie loves orbit. Um, she's based in California. We all decided to just do this conference. Um, so basically it is an online conference that we are holding once a year. And it is this year we had like almost a hundred classes of people talking about like YouTube, like how to grow your Instagram, how to, um, like classes for people that had huge Instagrams, how to like engage. And I mean, everything under the sun you can think of for influencers, rescue, small business, um, based around social media. We had like a section on blogging. We had a section on like PR, um, all kinds of photography. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had four rescues that, um, proceeds went to, which was great. We gave 25% of everything to rescues. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun and we are expanding this year. We're like growing our team out and um, hopefully the next pet summit will be in September we're aiming for. And then after that, we're hoping to do in person um, because 2020 was going to be in person in Austin. And then we had to pivot online. So we're hoping in 2022, we can go back to in person and do something fun. We're thinking Austin because Austin's the best. So. I have heard good things about Austin. Yeah, I have heard good things as well. Yet. It is the best. So it's, we it, were going to venture out there, but then, you know, the whole world mm -hmm. ended. Yeah. 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 And then the world ended. So it sounds like it's focused um, not so much at pet parents, but at the in, at like anybody involved in the industry yeah. of pets and dogs and animals. Exactly. So it's kind of, it's just like if you are an influencer or if you kind of want to be an influencer or if you're a rescue and you want to grow your rescue, if you want to start a rescue or if you're a blogger or if you're a small business, like anything in the pet space, um, there's something for you. Incredible. It, have you seen like a, um, I know we've seen it on, it's, it's somewhat rhetorical, but I, I don't have any information about it. Like how much has the, the pet industry grown maybe even just like in the last three to five years? It's insane. It's like, um, I think, I think it's like a, I'm don't quote me on this, but I think it's like a five or $6 billion industry right now. Um, much, and much it's higher. like, and much higher. Do, see, Do you know I'm what drunk. it is, Sylvia? Yeah. The pet industry yeah. in the U S alone, $72 billion. Oh, there you go. hundred billion global. Wow. So and we're learning to like, we're huge. The, the, um, I don't want to call it a movement, but the change. Oh, maybe I was thinking influencer, the pet influencer. Also, yeah, just, I, just think, I think, yeah. I think is, is 5 billion. I think that's what it was. Yeah. But I mean, it's huge space. We're hearing yeah. stories and just seeing it to where dogs in particular are really starting to replace kids in some ways, you know, and, oh, yeah. and making that shift and the, I'm um, totally okay with it. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the impact that they're having in our lives, um, the the mindset has been shifted. I've read numerous articles that losing a pet can often be um, harder to deal with than losing a family member, especially ones that you're not you know spending a lot of time with. Mm -hmm. And so it's 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 interesting to like hear that, and and that's one of the things that I'd be fascinated with with the pet summits because now you're taking this giant collection of people that are dealing with that every day and bringing them into this epicenter of change and ideas and inspiration, and it's very mm -hmm. cool. yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We was super successful. Like we had almost a thousand people attend um, in the first year, which is like unheard of, um, and it was just. It ended up being way more than we thought it was going to be, um, which was a good thing. And then we had like some amazing panels that were, that was a lot of fun, especially like we had like a diversity panel because as everyone knows, like the pet industry is very white focused. Um, and so like, it's very, we're very big on like trying to bridge that gap as well um, and bring 
more into that. Um, so we had a panel on that, which did really well, like a panel on rescues. We had, um, I don't know if you are country music fans, maybe no? from time to time. I live in um, Nevada. So, uh, okay. Uh, well, Dan and Shay, his wife was on there. Um, and they're huge rescue advocates. Um, so it was just a lot of fun and having, um, people from all different parts. And I mean, we had people in Greece, like people all over the world attend. So it was just fun to like bring the community together. Like our big thing is like community over competition um, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of other things um, in the pet industry that's very focused Mm -hmm. on competition. um, Mm -hmm. And we just not not our, not our thing, not our jam. No, I totally agree with that. I mean, being a pet professional myself, it's like I'm constantly, when I was doing, a lot of um, work for the pet sitter community on Rover, constantly explaining to people like, this is a community sport. We need to work together (laughs) as a community to elevate, you know, and, and the more we work together, then the higher we can just elevate awareness, rescue. Yeah. It's, it's all about elevating everybody together as once. Yeah. Um, All right. We're going to take one more quick break. We're going to be right back with Megan. I had a question. Uh, what was my question I wanted to launch back in with? What did you want to launch back in with, Jason? We're back. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I <laughs> we got sidetracked talking about all of the, the past guests and excitement and, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and now my brain is, is fogging over. That's uh, okay. My happens. brain does that all the time now. Um, um, so, Megan. Yes. From this, I'm just... My mind is still so, I'm literally floored because it used to, like, talk to us about Gal's best friend. Talk to us about like, cause that's really the, the little, the little nugget that started the whole Yeah, it whole is thing. Yes. So, I, I had like a weird, I think this is what, I think this is what happened. I think I was on Instagram like six years ago and I was I mean, I was still in the fashion industry at this point. And so I think I was like scrolling fashion stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I fell asleep. And then I had this dream that me and two of my friends from Dallas, who I um, was in a sorority with, and we did, um, we cheered for the Rangers together, like two of my best friends back there, that we started this dog blog, this blog, but it wasn't like a normal dog. It wasn't like a normal dog blog. Um, It was kind of like a fashion blog meets dog mom. Mm. in a sense um fashion for dogs or fashion for moms or both well just like not even that just like i don't know if you remember back like before all these blogs came along it was just like if you saw a dog blog it was like one they weren't aesthetically pleasing Mm -hmm. two the information was like web empty type of things yeah Um, it was like for it was specifically for dog parents to glean information about their dogs it wasn't like for dog parents or designed by and for the dog the dog yeah so like in my head I was thinking like having this place where there was like a section for like shopping guides a section for like DIYs a section for um I don't know rescues like all like like funny stories like all these things like more of like a kind of like a cosmopolitan.com for dogs. Um, and so I like called them the next morning. I'm like, Hey, so I had this dream that we did this and they're like, let's do it. And then, so the next day we like bought a domain and then we did it. Um, and it, at first it was, I mean, we are not, we never had a blog before. We did not know what we were doing. Um, <laughs> and so at first it was rough. Um, <laughs> so like the first, the first year we were you know, it was hard, <laughs> um, but then, but then we saw the light at the end of the tunnel and it kind of like blew up and then, you know, we, things started going well. And then our dog's Instagram started blowing up. Um, we then became influencers. Um, and then they did a dote that Dodo has done a few stories on Rumba. Um, so then that elevated us a little more. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, just a place where like every month we have a different rescue that we spotlight. Um, we spotlight different dogs every week. Um, we have shopping guides. I mean, basically we want it to be like the every girl for dog people. Um, so yeah, it's so much fun. There's now only, um, two of us. Um, one girl is, and, um, (laughs) 
<laughs> long, long story. So, uh, oh, wow. So in just a, in a brief <laughs> couple clicks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened. Um, so now it's just two of us and um, possibly bringing on somebody else um, to help with some things. So it's going and we're super excited. We're about to launch a shop um, with Noble Friend Shop. Um, so there'll be a lot of fun dog mom things going on there that we're super excited about. Very um, fun. Yeah. So it just keeps on growing. Like, I think that's what's been fascinating listening to your story is just where like it started and, and it's just spread. And now, now you're literally having an impact on thousands and thousands of people every single year. Like, um, what is that like kind of being an influencer? Like, yeah, you, no would, pressure. Like, would you consider yourself <laughs> falling into that category as an influencer? Cause I don't, I don't, I guess I separated it a little bit differently. There's people that use just their social media to bring attention and build mm -hmm. community, but you're doing, it's different, right? Like you're, yeah. you're launching businesses that are making an outward impact that the spotlight's not necessarily just on Megan. It's, yeah. it's putting the spotlight on, on lots of other people. Yeah. Which is kind of like our goal, like, especially with like God's best friend and the pet summit, it's to spotlight these animal welfare groups or rescues. Um, like not even, it doesn't need like for, for example, the pet summit isn't even all just dogs, it's pets. So like one of our rescue organizations is animal tracks, which is based in LA. Um, and they have, they take exotic animals that are illegally owned basically mm. or retired monkeys and things like that and give them a place um, to live so like their tiger days. king, but like healthy, but good, but good. Yeah. yeah. But good. Um, okay. It's mostly, it's mostly primates and um, a few kangaroos and stuff like that. So, I mean, hold on. People own kangaroos. What is happening? People are stupid. People are like, I want a kangaroo. And they get one. They're like, fuck, I have a kangaroo. It, like, it's what do I do with me this? All the time. Yeah. I mean, people are so dumb. Um, it's just, it's infuriating. How do you contain, don't they jump? Yeah, they do. How do you build a fence tall and, enough to contain a kangaroo? And not all kangaroos are like nice. They're like, mostly not nice. Yeah. So it's like, they probably like, it's stupid. It's just, I mean, I, I, don't. I never would condone animal abuse of any sort, but have you guys seen the video where the, the kangaroo was beating up on that dude's dog? <laughs> And he walked out there like that. The, the guy walks out, punched like, the kangaroo in the face so that he the kangaroo would let the dog go. And then, yeah, like it was it was bad. it was awesome. It was, it was it was it was crazy that the guy just like, boom. And yeah. then. But have yeah, you, have you seen it? So I have not seen oh, this video, uh, but I have homework, apparently. Gotta, like I have the podcast. Not, <laughs> he saved it's his cool. dog. It was yeah. so cool. It was pretty crazy. And but yeah, kangaroo like, is way bigger than him anyways. It's like, the kangaroo. oh, yeah, it was huge. Yeah. These and it was like all jacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't think we realize how big and badass kangaroos are. Like they've got like. Huge I mean, biceps. I do realize. Oh, this is God. why I'm. They stand like eight feet tall, and that's not that's not even with extending their legs. Yeah. Yeah, it was. They're nuts. Yeah, animal I mean, tracks is is awesome. They they like take these animals and they you know and their big thing is education. Like this is a baboon. Baboons do not belong in your bedroom. They belong in the wild. Um, they're very good at like education and things. Um, so, I mean, I don't know where I was going with that. Just, just how we're you're talking. highlighting like other business. <laughs> and, and I think that's what's, what's fascinating. And, and uh, the amount of stuff that I've learned just speaking with people like you and guests, the expansive impact that is out there in the animal community that yeah. like I didn't even know about, let alone it's just the average person. It's so cool. Yeah, I think our like oh that's what I was saying. Like our big thing with Gal's best friend and the pet summit is like animal welfare and rescues and like like educating people that you know and like even for us like growing up like I didn't I'm not against like breeders like let me preface by saying that but um, responsible breeders mm -hmm. um, but like growing up like we didn't think like you had to rescue a dog you know now yeah. rescuing a dog is the cool thing to do yeah. um, mm -hmm. but like growing up I mean we had Rottweilers. My mom, we bought Rottweilers. Like that's all we had. And I mean, not that, it, not that that's a bad thing, but like now it's like you have this better option mm -hmm. to rescue a Rottweiler. And mm -hmm. so like, and I think a lot of people also don't understand that. That's what we, I use Pharrell and Rosie's account for a lot is um, like breed rescues. So, I mean, Pharrell mm -hmm. and Rosie are both purebred border collies, both adopted. 
Um, and I don't think people realize that you can do that, that you can rescue. Like if I'm a border collie person, like I will never have another dog unless it's a pot cake or a border collie ever. <laughs> um, like you're either straight Dominican or you're a border collie. And, um, I, I mean, there's so many rescues out there that are mm-hmm. just, I mean, purebred, beautiful pup. Like I got for I was a puppy. It was a puppy. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what the numbers are, but I, I want to say it's, it's in the 50% range of animals that are purebred dogs and or cats or whatever that are in rescues. Yeah. And I just don't think people n- know that. And they're like, well, I have to have a doodle. I have to have a doodle. I'm hypoallergenic. So I'm like, first of all, there's like plenty of studies shown that doodle people do not come after me that, um, <laughs> you can like do- doodles aren't, they are not hypoallergenic. Like mm-hmm. it does not come from their fur. It comes from their dander. So just because they don't shed doesn't mean you're not allergic to them. Um, it's like, it blows my mind when people are like, I'm allergic. So I can only have doodles. I'm like, bitch, I'm allergic. Like I have like seven, I have like seven inhalers by my bed, seven inhalers. I get allergy shots. I like been to the hospital multiple times and like the ER doctors are like, um, so the only way you're going to survive a long life is you get rid of dogs. I'm like, give me more drugs. We'll figure it out. (laughs) I'll Um, go for a shorter life. Hashtag worth it. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, and so it just like kind of infuriates me a little and I'm like, There's some, and, and I love doodles, don't get me wrong, but like, there's also doodle rescues. Like you can yeah. rescue a doodle. Um, yeah, I mean, so- I've had clients who get these puppies and they just can't handle them and mm-hmm. and they return them, you know, as puppies. And then the breeders don't want a six month old puppy. Mm-mm. So yeah, there's yeah. plenty of options. Unfortunately. Oh, I Jason, knew you were gonna do this to me, dang it. This is the end of our show. I can't believe it. We're here I- already. <laughs> It's oh. so sad, but um, we have very important business to attend to, Megan, yes. because we end our show in a very, very specific way. You've done, Ooh. you've gotten so no. good at, at at launching this. It's almost put so much pressure that I nail this now, Sylvia. Like, but you, no pressure. Your intro is great, but okay, so, so much have, pressure. We have dog, don't mess this dog up. dad jokes. Don't fuck it up, Jason. I'm not. Oh, I'm excited on this one. <laughs> I'm so excited for Jason. This. Okay. Are you ready? No, this is. I'm excited about this one too. This is. I have to make sure I don't mess this one up because it's really Jason. good if I can nail it. Are you ready? Okay. What do you get when you cross a cocker spaniel, a poodle, and a rooster? A, co- a, co- a cocker poodle do. <laughs> So good. <laughs> In my head, though, I said cocker doodle. How apropos, Jason? <laughs> like, did you know we were going to talk about doodles? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I was like, that was, that was a well. I do love doodles. I feel like I have to say that again. No, I do we all love, love doodles. doodles. I don't think I, you know how these, you know how these people are. Like, if you say one thing about their breed, they come at you. And I'm like, it's relax. True. We it's love, I, I don't think that there is a breed in specific that we don't love. Like it, the, it, at least that's, that's where my I think heart we're just all is. three here, general yeah, yeah. dog loving humans. I mean, Megan, maybe more than, than all of us combined, <laughs> but after this conversation, I'm like, am I doing this right? I need to see right. my brand. Yeah, Apparently no. I don't have a dog up in this bitch. I have been <laughs> lying to people for a year. I feel terrible. I've been misrepresenting. Doing great. I have absolute imposter syndrome. Thank you, Megan. Um, You're doing great. You're doing great. (laughs) Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for being on our show today, Megan. Thanks for having me, guys. So much fun. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. Yes. Bye. Toodles. Thank you guys so much for joining uh, Sylvia and I and Megan Rose and spending some time with us to learn about everything that's going on with the Pet Summit and books and Dominican and like all those really, really cool things. There was so many different um, Instagram and Facebook pages and things to follow on um, on this show. I'm not even going to try and recite them all off. They will be in the show notes down below, but please go make sure that you follow uh, Megan on all of her different topics. Jump over and make sure that you follow Forever USA and Dog Up on This Bitch. And obviously hit the subscribe button for uh, the Dogish podcast. Yes, um, you need to know what's coming every single week. We have so many amazing guests lined yes. up. And 
as always, if there's something in particular that you think that we should be talking about or somebody that we should meet and have on the show, please reach out to us. Let us know. We will do our absolute best to try and get them involved. And honestly, after hearing about Pet Summit, there sounds like there's just going to be so many people that we get to talk to you. We're super excited. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next week. Till well, next time. Yeah. Yeah.